Hello, and welcome to Race and Ethnicity, week eight. This week, we're going to be looking at chapter five in our book, and we're going to be doing a, an assignment on the association between race and housing. Um, so this week, you're going to be studying urbanization, and the best way to really think about race and housing is to just drive through any city. For example, if you go up to Cleveland and you start up on the northwest side of the lake, very nice homes. And then you work your way into downtown and you get the downtown district. And then as you kind of go a little bit farther east on the lake, you get into the colleges and you have that kind of bohemian up and coming district with a little bit of arts. And then if you keep going east a little bit further, you end up on 55th Street. And by the time you get to 55th Street along the lake, it's a completely different place than where you started up on the northwest side. So and then when you take 55th Street all the way down to LeBron James Parkway, all the way until you hit Cuyahoga, you can definitely see the lower class neighborhoods. They used to be great working neighborhoods, working class neighborhoods with really nice houses. But then again, you lost all the population of the north as jobs moved to China and jobs moved south, for example, because of the union and the expense of the workers. So you can see segregation not only in social class, but also segregation when it comes to race. Because again, as you start up in your upper northwest side, you start out with all white housing. And by the time you work your way over to 55th Street, you end up with all black housing. And then you have a little bit of Hispanic and some other ethnicities mixed in there. But then as you go down 55th Street, all you see then are poor whites and poor blacks all the way to Cuyahoga Falls. And so you can see the association not only between social class and housing and segregation, but also race because a lot of those neighborhoods become racialized or have become racialized over time, okay? Then you also see interesting trends such as the white flight, which you guys will be discussing. So when they integrated the schools, white people didn't wanna to go to school with African-Americans. So what they did was those that could afford cars and those that could afford the high property tax areas moved out to the suburbs. So then all the money left the cities and these cities became uh, these cesspots of lower class people, okay? And so you had really high crime rates in like the 70s and the 80s in New York, you know, for example, in Chicago and go to uptown in Chicago is a very dangerous place in the 1970s, okay? Because all the people with money, they went out to the suburbs where the good school districts are. And so then you start to see the association between education and race and social class. Those that could afford to get out to the upper white or the upper class suburbs and generally you know they had the good schools and then generally to have enough money to get out to the suburbs also meant being white because if you weren't white you were again it's 1960s you're going to be discriminated against for your race for your ethnicity for your sex okay so you start to see this urban trend where people moved out to the suburbs but then now you're starting to see a shift okay so now you're starting to see this migration where people are moving back into the cities and property levels are rising but as people are moving back into the cities we're then gentrifying these neighborhoods and then we're pushing out the poor communities back out toward the suburbs okay and again the people that are moving into the, into the city are the people that have enough money to be able to live in the city and to pay for these more expensive housing and so now what you're starting to see out in the suburbs is lower class neighborhoods. You're starting to see increases in crime. You're starting to see increases in drug use. I mean, again, where's the majority of the pandemics? You know, how much of the death is happening in the city? And then how much of the death is kind of happening out in the suburbs, you know, as you kind of work out. So now you've seen this great flip. OK, but again, uh, housing was historically segregated based upon race. Um, it used to be law where it was justified, where, you know, a white person wasn't even allowed to sell their house to somebody that was non-white. We have had a history of mortgage rate uh, discrimination. And as I've talked about in pre previous lectures, um, you know, we the difference between wealth, between white and non-white is owning a house. OK, so again, if you want to end racism and you want to create a more equitable world, this idea of the segregated suburbs and the segregated who gets accepted for a mortgage rate, these are some of the things that we can change, okay? So again, if you want to see discrimination decrease, simply allow someone who's non-white to also get a mortgage because the disparity in wealth between white and black is the difference between owning a house and not owning a house, okay? But there were so many laws that were used and so many social norms and taboos that you know, entertain this idea of segregated neighborhoods long after the civil rights. And you can see that even in modern times where neighborhoods are highly racialized. 
And we might not want to admit that because that's like saying that segregation still exists. But I mean, seriously, segregation does still exist. Your race influences who you hang out with. Your race influences who you marry. Race structures your life in more ways than you know. And that's the point of sociology, to expose all of that. How does race structure your life? What if you stop thinking of yourself as racial? Would that free you up to be able to hang out with anybody without inhibition or fear? Okay, so this week you guys are going to read chapter five, and I love your book. Again, it is such a deeply written book, and I mean, it just hits right to the core of everything I love to study, even though it's really sad because studying reality at times is not always awesome. Uh, so you guys are going to read chapter five, and you're going to take the inquisitive. You're also going to research housing issues in America online. So for this assignment, when you guys click on here, assignment housing discrimination, uh, discrimination, so you guys are gonna take two cities. Like I'm from Chicago and Ohio and Nashville. Like I know that North Nashville is black, South Nashville is white, East and West Nashville is poor white, okay? In Chicago, Northwest suburbs are white. The kind of the suburbs in the other areas are kind of mixed. South side is African-American. Uh, far West is a blend of many ethnicities, okay? And then so every city kind of has this racialized, segregated neighborhoods. You know, in New York, Harlem was for African-Americans and lower Manhattan was for the poor people and middle Manhattan was for the upper class whites, for example, okay? And again, this is always constantly changing, which is why urbanization and urban studies are absolutely fascinating. And yes, that is sociology. You're studying groups of people. That's what sociology is, the study of society, groups of people. But something in common so yeah we're studying urbanization and how cities operate and this association between race and social class and you know where people are living <laughs> how does that structure your life so i'm really excited for this week hope you guys learn a lot and it just you know really introduces you again to these ideas of institutional discrimination and how it works uh, please email me with any questions and have a wonderful day